We have discriminated against indigenous children for, for generations, for decades, for centuries. A surge in reported suicide. 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 If you talk to children and youth about suicide, they're going to do it. Well, the fact is, they're already doing it. What exactly is suicide? Suicide is the intentional action of ending one's own life, and a suicide attempt is when one tries to end their life. Suicide rates are five to seven times higher for Indigenous youth compared to the non-Indigenous youth, making it some of the highest rates in the world. A large portion of children aged 6 to 11 experience behavioral or emotional problems when they're at an age where they should be having fun and roaming around freely. From all this, you can tell that there's a clear suicide crisis amongst this cultural group. But if you take a step back, you'll see that this was not always the case. Indigenous suicide was very rare in the past. Communities were connected with their cultural beliefs, language, and lived with freedom. This, however, changed after coming in contact with the Europeans. A domino of events led to colonialism, and suicide became quite prevalent after that. The effects of colonization include the creation of residential schools, which stripped Aboriginal children of their cultural beliefs. There is also forced adoption, known as the 60s scoop. Eileen, Sean, Chris, and Eric, Barbara's children. We were just fortunate the first time we went through to be able to get uh, three of one family and uh, three Indians. And denial of existence as people. With all of this began the rise in suicide. There are many factors that lead to suicide, including mental health. Some may have depression, low self-esteem, or other illnesses that should never be overlooked. Social factors such as rapid cultural changes make them vulnerable. And on top of that, factors including isolation or lack of support for appropriate mental health services can negatively affect them. Overall, the causes that lead to suicide go much deeper than the individual's control. On top of all of this, there's a lot of discrimination that the indigenous peoples of Canada face. To this day, people of these communities live in very poor housing conditions. Canada has a budget of around $1.4 billion to end all long-term advisories for these communities, but this is a lot less than the healthcare budget for the rest of Canada. On top of that, they have lack of access to clean water, limited access to healthcare, high rates of unemployment, and low rates of education. Yeah there's a huge difference in our lives. So how can we as non-Indigenous Canadians help prevent this issue? For one, raising awareness to better their qualities of life could encourage higher officials to help. On top of that, implementing a school-based suicide prevention program and taking care of Indigenous students who travel to new places to continue with their education can go a long way. As simple as befriending, accepting, or standing up for an Indigenous youth could help them combat struggles such as racism and discomfort to a new environment. In the end, we as a newer generation should not isolate people because of their cultural background. Canada, a country known for its multiculturalism, is facing an indigenous suicide crisis and we should not turn our backs on it.